This is New Cap News with Nerman Esau. Good evening. A 36 year old man is recovering tonight from injuries he sustained in an early morning attack in Sandy Beach. Now the man was taken to the Maidstone Hospital with stab wounds and cuts to his neck and shoulder. Police say both he and a 36 year old woman were involved in the altercation and at the time of the attack, the woman was ordered by the court to not have any contact with the victim. Now the woman was later located and arrested at a residence in Lloydminster. The investigation is still ongoing and no other details are available at the moment. Well, it's been a tough week for staff and students at Portage College in Lac La Biche and St. Paul. Now, earlier today, someone crashed into the side of the building of the St. Paul campus. Now, police say it happened in the early hours before students arrived at school. Nobody was seriously injured in the incident, and the driver was taken to hospital for precautionary reasons. Students and non-essential staff were sent home as police continue to investigate. The campus is expected to reopen on Monday. Well, meanwhile, classes at Portage College in Lac La Biche campus were canceled after a fire broke out in its carpentry shop yesterday. Power to the building was shut off as fire crews put out the blaze that started under a table saw. Officials say they brought in a cleaning company last night and started to ventilate the building. A restoration company will work over the weekend to make sure no harmful residue is left. Because of the moldering that had taken place over a period of eight hours, uh, we want to be sure that no toxins uh, carried by airborne smoke have uh, infiltrated the building. Now, according to initial estimates, repairs may cost up to $100,000. Staff expect the school to reopen on Monday morning. Now, news of Premier Allison Redford's resignation is still a buzz across the country. Many conclude her travel expenses and in-house fighting were what led to her decision on Wednesday. Now, Newcap News caught up with a former Alberta MLA today who resigned from the Conservative caucus in 2012. Former Vermilion Lloydminster MLA Lloyd Snellgrove was not entirely surprised of the news and says he didn't think Redford would make it two years into her tenure. After the way they uh, tried to justify so much of what they've done, I thought the party would try and uh, keep her around for long enough for them to make some kind of a more uh, graceful exit, and uh, I anticipated she would leave in the summer. Snellgrove says he resigned back then to be an independent MLA for several reasons, including Redford's style of working with people. None of them, with the exception of, of Morton, we're even slightly concerned about balancing the books. Snellgrove hopes many of the ministers find a way to distance themselves from the party to regroup. They have some serious conversations about where where they need to be as a political party, and uh, and and what their 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 principal goals and principles have to be, and then they hold. Uh, conventions in a meaning, a meaningful manner. Now he further adds it's going to be a difficult time for the PC party to bring themselves back up in the polls. An agreement between Saskatchewan First Nations and the Harper government went unsigned today. Nine leaders from Aboriginal communities, including Onion Lake and Thunder Child, held a news conference in Saskatoon, saying the federal government is requiring them to comply with unfair auditing standards that no other party needs to meet in order to qualify for the transfer of funds. Now, Onion Lake First Nation Chief uh, Wallace Fox says he's willing to live with the consequences of not signing the current funding agreement. Well, for the sixth year in a row, the people of Kitscotty and surrounding communities have come together to support a family in need. Now, this year, they've chosen the family of 17-year-old Evan Wolgeen. Now, Evan was injured back in August while on the job when a tire he was working on exploded. He remains in a Pinoka rehab center. I actually just heard about his story, and he's a 17-year-old kid that was ready to graduate, and he was a hard-working kid, so something like this happening to him kind of hit home. The Kitscotty Canucks Charity Hockey Tournament starts today and goes until Sunday with multiple games throughout the weekend. On the 22nd is the main day. That's when we do silent auction. We'll have a beer gardens uh, concession at Coelectric donated a, a big barbecue to us. So we'll uh, make some burgers and stuff like that and donate all, all the proceeds from that back to Evan. Dara says the best time to check out the event would be tomorrow around noon.